Today we're going to go from this to this with Folder View. In today's video, I show you how to configure and use Folder View on Unraid. Folder View is a plugin for Unraid that lets you create folders for grouping your Docker containers and your VMs together to help with organization and cleaning up your dashboard and your Docker tabs. And thanks to Homes333 for the idea. Before we get started, you should know that this video is going to cover the configuration and use side of Folder View, not the installation. If you need to install Folder View on Unraid 7, I have a separate video on that. You can click on the card, clink, you can click on the card. You can click on the card up in the top corner. I never know which corner it is. One of these, this one, I think. And I'll also leave a link in the description to that video. Onto the Folder View configuration. All right, let's get started by going to our Docker tab. Scroll all the way down. In the bottom left, you'll find Add Folder. Go ahead and click on Add Folder. All right, so as we work through this, I'm going to go over each item and talk about what they do and, and how they affect the program itself. First option here is Name. It wants a name for the folder. When I'm done with this video, I'll put a screenshot up here and you can see the list of the folders that I created for my demo machine. If there's something there that you know kind of sparks an idea, then by all means, you know, steal from me. All right, so the first one, Name here, I'm going to put in here Media Automation. I'm going to use this for my R's. Next option down, we have Icon. And you can browse to an icon file that you'd like to use for this. Personally, I like to use the Hernandito's animated icons. And I'll leave a link to this below, but I'll grab it here, bring it up, and then show you what uh, what kind of stuff he has to offer. There we are at his page. We'll scroll down a little bit, and you'll see some examples here. So these are the animated Docker folder icons for Unraid. This is the Pale Collection. There are all kinds of them. Blue Collection, Gray Collection, Orange Collection, and the Yellow Collection. I believe the last time I did this, I had orange set up, so I'm just going to go back to orange. There's a nice new feature that he's added to. If you go up to the top here and you go into the orange collection, and this works for each color too. You can choose whatever color you'd like. If you scroll down, you actually see the animated icons down here. It's kind of nice. Shows you what they look like. So I like this one here, kind of fitting for media. If you scroll back to the top, there'll be the orange collection.png file. You can click onto that, and then it'll have each individual icon shown and their name listed right below it. And this is the one that I liked, orange-multimedia.png. I verified that that's the one I want. Go back a level, find it in the list here, orange multimedia SVG, right there. Once you find it, go ahead and click on it to open it up. Make sure it's the one you want. Then you'll right-click on it, and you'll select Copy Image Address. We'll go back to Unraid, and we'll paste that location into the icon field. And you'll see the icon appears right there. Now let's move on to the rest of the configuration. And as I go through these items, I'll tell you which ones that I like. So the first option down here is preview. Our options are none, icon label, icon only, label only, or list. This is how the items will appear in the menu. The default is label and icon, and by default, it's going to have the icon for it and then a label of what that folder is named. I like that option, so I'll leave it there. Next down, we have show preview and hover. This will hide all the icons and all the labels for everything. You'll just have a blank folder listed there. And then when you hover over it, it'll show up. I don't like that one, so I leave that off. Next down, we have orange text and update. That's basically saying that if there's an update for that container, the text for it will be in orange. It's just an easy way to visually recognize that there's an update for that item. And I have a few updates pending, and I left them so that I could show you what it looks like when we get done. So I'll leave that on because I like that. Text width. This limits the width of the container name. So if you have a really long container name, it's going to stretch that field out. And you can have them with this. You can have it all limited so it's they're all a certain size. I don't like that really. I just kind of leave it the way it is and let things adjust as they need to. Next down, we have preview icon grayscale. And that's basically does exactly what it says. It makes all the icons gray. Figure what's the point? If you're uh, doing colored folders, why well, have gray boring icons? And just to be clear, those are the icons of the containers within the folders, not the folder icons. I leave that off. Add preview open web UI. What this does is it adds a little globe icon that will open the container's web UI. It's just a quick shortcut, basically, to it. I like to have that, so I leave it on. Add preview open logs. That's the same thing. There's a little log icon that opens the container's log. Add preview open console. Having this turned on, it adds a little console icon that will open the terminal window for that container. I like that as well, so I leave that turned on, too. Preview vertical bars. This will put little vertical bars between each container, so it kind of helps visually separate them. I like that option. So I turn that on. Preview context. There's three different options in here. You've got none, default, and advanced. None, if you have it set to that, nothing happens when you click on the container icon. So there's no options available. Default will show the normal context window of options when the icon is clicked. Things like start, restart, stop. 
And then advanced, this is the one that I choose. Once you select advanced, it opens a few more options here. But the advanced option will show you the normal context stuff, the start, stop, restart, those things. Plus, it also adds a graph of the CPU and memory usage. And it also has a tab for the port mappings and volume mappings. And I'll show you that once we get into it further. If you selected the advanced mode, then you get a few more options. Activation mode, graph mode, and the time frame. For activation mode, you've got two different options, click or hover. Personally, I like hover, but the difference between the two is whenever you go over a container, you can either click on the icon to get the window to come up that has all the information in it, or if you just hover over it, which is the hover option, then it'll give a half a second and it'll pop up with the, the information. I like hover, I'm gonna set it at hover. Graph mode, you've got a couple options here. None, which gets rid of the graph. Combined, it adds the memory and the CPU together in one graph. Split, it splits the graphs apart, or you can do CPU only or memory only. I'll let combined, I'll leave it on that one. Time frame, this is the time frame in the graph, so you can set it right now, it's set 60 seconds, but you can adjust that so you can have, you know, five minutes worth of time frame shown in that graph or 10 seconds if you want, whatever you want to set it to. I think 60 seconds is a good default number, so I'm going to leave it at that. All right, scrolling down. We've got show preview border. This puts a border around the container previews. By default, it's white, but if you click on the little box there, you can select any color you want. If you want it to match your icons, you could you know go through and select kind of an orange color or whatever color you wanted, something like that. Right next to it, you've got the reset option. It sets it back to defaults. Next down, we have hide update column. So by default in Unraid, usually at the top, there's gonna to be an option that says updates available and you'll have a list of updates and that'll show whether or not there's updates available. This option here, hide update column, will turn that off and not show you that there's an update available. I like to know when there's an update, so I leave this off. Next, we have override default actions. So the default actions for each folder will be the normal things you have, like start, stop, restart, those kind of options. You can hide the default action buttons, which like I said, are the start, stop, restart. The expand on Docker VM tab. By default, the folder's all closed and all the containers are within it. This being turned on would automatically expand that folder and show each individual Docker container. Next option down is expand on dashboard tab. On the dashboard of Unraid, you'll see a list of all the Docker containers there. And this option, if it's turned on, will automatically expand the folder there as well. Personally, I don't like any of those on, so let's turn that off. We'll leave all those turned off. So just as a recap, the options that I typically change in here are I turn on the vertical preview bars. I set the preview context to advanced mode. And then the activation mode, I changed to hover. So now that we've got the folder set up, let's go add the different containers that we want to be contained within this folder. So if we scroll all the way down, you'll find all the Docker containers that you have on your system. Since I said this one is gonna be for my Rs, the media automation stuff, I'm gonna start looking through the list here and find things that I can put into it. Radar, that one I want on there. So on the right-hand side, there's a little toggle option here. Toggle that on to select that one. Scrolling down, let's find another one. Sonar, once again, we'll toggle that on. LiDAR, that sounds like a good option. HOMAR, let's toggle that one in there. Overseer, let's do that one. And let's add Flare Solver. I'm sure I'm missing something, but we can always go back and adjust that. Once you've got your options selected, scroll back up and you'll find a submit option here. Go ahead and hit submit and you'll see it's created a folder here and you'll see the containers we added are contained within it. So at this point, you just repeat the process and you create all the folders that you're gonna need. So I'm gonna pause it here, go set all mine up because it's the same repetitive thing. And I'll be back in a moment. All right, I'm back. I left a couple items here so I could show you some of the additional features. But before we get into the use of folder view, why not come join us on Discord? I'll leave a link down in the description. Also, one thing I wanted to add in real quick here is that I'm in the process of switching out from my Unify equipment to some grand stream networking equipment. And if you know of any good guides to follow, I'd love to hear your suggestions. I've got a lot of experience with Unify, but none with grand stream. It doesn't look really that different, but if you got anything, let me know. I'd appreciate it. And I'll leave links to the equipment that I have in the description if you want to check it out and see if, if it applies or not. All right, on to the use. All right, first thing, let's start on the left here and we'll work our way over. The first part of it here is the icon that we had selected for the folder. If you click on that icon, it gives you options. You can start, stop, pause, resume, restart, edit, or remove. Starting, stopping, pausing, and resuming and restarting all affect everything that's in that folder. If they're all stopped, you can just come here and hit start and all the items, all the containers within that folder will start up. I left this one blank so I could show you the option here. You've got the remove option, which gets rid of that folder. So we'll go ahead and click remove since it's blank anyhow. Are you sure? 
Yes, it goes away. Next, you'll see that the watch state container has been left out of a group. Let me show you how to add that to another group. You've got a couple of different options. You can find the group you want it to go into. In this case, it's going to be media automation. So you can click on to the icon. You can go down to edit and it opens it up. I'm going to cancel. I'll show you the other way real quick. If you find the name of the service that you want right next to the icon, you just click on that. It's one click shorter. You can just click on the name and it takes you right into the edit side of it. The ones that are currently in there will already be toggled on. The ones that are available will have the option to be toggled on. Watch state I wanted to add, I'll toggle that on. Hit submit, it gets it out of the list, and now you'll see that it's been added down here. Oh, there's actually more items than it'll show, but if you drop down the media automation, you'll see it listed there, right there. Minimize that. Same thing goes for removing an item. You just go back into it, scroll down, find the item you want to get out of there, toggle it off, hit submit, and it'll pull it out of there. I'm going to leave it in there. Next, we have the down arrow. If you click on that, it'll expand that folder and show you everything contained within it. Just like that. Press it again, and it'll hide all the contents within it. Up here, the version header. Like I was saying earlier, that you can hide this column that shows if there's an update available. You'll see here that it says update available on a couple of these. One of the other settings on there was to change the text orange if there was an update available. Right now, this doesn't show you which container has the update. I mean, if you look over here, you can tell, but right here, it doesn't say where it is. If you expand that down, it'll show you which container actually has the update. You can click update here. It'll start the update process for that container. Knowing that, now we can look through here and see this one is orange, this one's orange, and that one's orange. So we know those have updates available. All right, let's go over a little further here and click on a container's icon. If you click onto the icon, it's going to show you options available. If you did not turn on the hover option, then you have to actually click on this icon to show you the options that are available for each individual container. You've got the normal actions here, start, restart, those things. Project page, the donation stuff, that's the normal stuff within the container itself. Next over, we have the graph option, which shows you the graph here and the legend up here for it. Next option, we have the port mappings. And yes, we're going to trust this. Go back into it. And I don't know which one it was, but this one looks good. All right, port mappings. It shows you the port mappings and volume mappings. It'll show you those as well. If you didn't turn on the hover option, then once you're done with this, you need to click on it again to get rid of it. Or you can click off to the side somewhere. Let me turn the hover option. Like I said, I like that. So I'm going to go turn that on in this one real quick and show you the difference. We'll change the activation mode from click to hover. Scroll down. Don't forget to submit. Now when we hover over one of the items within that media automation folder now, it'll just pop right up. If you move off, it goes away. I think it's very convenient. And note that only works if you hover over the icon itself. If you go over the text, one of the other options off to the side, nothing happens. I said earlier about the little world icon that shows up. And this will open up the web UI for it. So if you just click on the world, it opens the web UI. Close out of there. The icon next to it is the one for the terminal or the console. If you click into there, it opens the console for that container. Next to that, you've got the three little bars, the hamburger menu. That is for the logs for that container. Click on it, opens the logs. It's kind of nice to have those options right, right at your fingertips. Scrolling all the way over to the right, you've got the auto start option. You can turn on auto start for every container within that folder. If you don't want everything in there to turn on by default, you can expand the container, find the one that you want to auto start, and just turn that one on. It'll still show off over here, letting you know that something in that group is set to not auto start. There you have it. Folder view is fantastic. It's one of my favorites. And lastly, thanks go out to my patrons for their supporting the channel. I really appreciate it. Patreon members get early access to my videos, and they're both ad and sponsor free. If you feel like supporting the channel, I'll leave a link down in the description. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And in the meantime, check out one of these next. And I'll see you in the next one.